Okay, Rovers, it's in your hands. You beat Berry Monday night at Ewood Park and you'll be top of the league. Come on, don't mess this one up. That's right folks, back once again with another match preview this time, counting down to the next big one, and things have started to fall into place for Blackburn. We've had a bit of a bit of a lucky escape again. Uh, it cannot happen any more time. So now is the chance for Rovers to get to top spot. We'll talk more about that in just one second. But if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. That's right, Shrewsbury. Lost to Red Hot Rotherham. We'll talk more about that match uh, in a little bit. But uh, that is now opened up. The table, if, if the season ended right here, right now, we would still not get promoted. But it does look a lot more doable uh, now that they've got rid of that game in hand. So we will play Monday, which will then give them another game in hand. But what we need to do is win. Anyway, let's talk more about the match itself. It's coming up 19th of February. That's a Monday. It's a night kickoff. Uh, and last season, Berry finished uh, League One in 19th place. The current top scorer is Jermaine Beckford with eight goals. Current managers are Ryan Lowe and Ryan Kidd, the caretakers after uh, who got sacked. It was Lee Clark and then Chris, Chris Lucchetti. They both had uh, shots at managing Berry, but it's, it's not worked out for them this season. They currently find themselves in 23rd spot after the results on Saturday. Uh, over the years, Blackburn and Berry have met 72 times in all competitions and in all grounds. And Rovers have won 35 of them, Berry have won 32. And the two sides have drawn 15 apiece over the years. Uh, as for the last five results at Blackburn, they look like this. In fact, the last time these two sides played at uh, Ewood Park, Berry were the victors, 2-1. Uh, but before that, it was a four-game winning stretch for Rovers. So let's take a look at the lineups. This is how I feel Blackburn will start the match against... Uh, Barry, I've mixed it up a little bit. If you're new to, uh, if you're familiar to my formation, it's usually a 4-4-2. But obviously, a lot of people keep moaning at me, saying that that's not the formation we play. I think this is more along the lines. But uh, here we go: Raya in goal, Nayimbi, Lenahan, Mulgrew, and Bell. That's my back four for the match. Smallwood and Bennett in that defensive midf midfield kind of role, keeping things tight and organised. And then into the creative outlet with Payne, Dak, and Armstrong feeding the man. Well, not really feeding the man, but supporting the man up front. Danny Graham, let's take a look at the statistics. Rovers, top goal scorer at the moment is Bradley Dack with 13 goals. Hot on his tail is Danny Graham with 12 goals. And also Charlie McGrew, the uh, cap captain extraordinaire. Then tailing up right in fourth place is Dominic Sam. He hasn't scored in a while, so he's due a goal. It would be nice if he could do it this Monday. As for discipline, Smallwood's there with nine yellows. Bennett's there with seven. Williams is there with six. And Dak has also six. As for Reds. Bennett's got two reds, Samuel's got one, and there's Lewis Travis from the last match with that one red card from Portsmouth. That's right. Rumour has it if Smallwood gets a yellow in the match against Berry, he will be suspended for two games, I think. Uh, I think the plan, I don't know if this is a, a underlining plan by Moby, is to get himself booked, so to, to wipe the slate clean so he's good and ready to go for the Wigan game, which is going to be massive at this rate. If, if it keeps up with this kind of uh, situation at the top end of the table, I know Wigan have got two games in hand, but their form is a bit rusty as of late. Rovers really need to, to, to take advantage of these sloppy performances by Shrewsbury and Wigan. But we've also got to keep an eye over our shoulder of Rotherham. They are now fourth, uh, 59 points. That's four points behind, but they have played a game more than us. Scunthorpe trailing off a little bit. Um, and Charlton making up the sixth spot, but it does get a little tight after that. Plymouth, Bradford, Portsmouth, and Peterborough probably still sniffing around. And you could probably include Gillingham and Bristol Rovers if we're going to go for 45 points. As for the form book, this is what Rovers' form looks like last five games. Last time out, they took on Portsmouth at Fratton Park and won 2 1. Massive, massive victory that one before that. Sloppy home. Uh, draw against Oldham, who are struggling in the foot end of the, the bottom end of the table. Before that, we lost to Red Hot Plymouth, who are where are they now in the league? They're seventh. Uh, before that, we took on Warsaw. We won three one at Ewood. That's the sort of performance we need uh, on Monday. And before that, we took on Northampton again, struggling side, and we failed to really take advantage. So I'm hoping it's not a similar case because if you look 
at uh, the those teams that we've drawn and lost. Well, not, not necessarily lost against, but the, the teams that we've drawn against most recently at home have been struggling sides. So that falls into the books or the category of Berry. Let's take a look at our visitors. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the, the, the jersey that they were playing. It looks more like a Jamaican jersey of old. But uh, anyway, uh, in goal is Ripley. Yes, that is correct. Stuart Ripley's boy, Connor is on the books at Barry. must be on loan from Middlesbrough. Then we've got Edwards, Thompson, Clark and Lee. Ishmael, Dawson, Laurent and Bunn. Miller and Hansen up front. Let's take a look at the statistics for Barry. Jermaine Beckford tops the pops with eight goals. Bunn's there with four. Miller's got four. And McGuire's got two into the discipline. Cameron's got six yellows. Edwards has got five. Dawson's got four. And O'Connell has four. As the Reds, O'Connell's got two of them. Lowe's got one. And Murphy has one. The form book for Barry. It's not too bad, to be honest. They are unbeaten in the last five. Uh, as for their last match, they took on South End. They drew 0-0 at Berry's Ground, which is Gig Lane. Uh, before that, they drew with uh, Bradford City at their gaff. 2-2 uh, result. Bradford's gone for a real rough patch at the moment. Uh, before that, they took on uh, Wimbledon at Gig Lane, and they won 2-1. Uh, as for uh, the match before that on Saturday the 3rd of February it was a, another Northwest encounter with Blackpool at Gig Lane they drew 1-1 and all the way back Saturday the 20th of January they drew no they didn't they won against Oxford United at the Kazam so going into this Barry don't look half bad if Rovers don't take advantage of this we could re I, I, I feel then we've massively uh, missed a huge opportunity and I don't think we're gonna get many more than this so Rovers need to win, but when you look at some comments later on in the uh, fans section, you'll see a lot of them are going for some heavy victories for Rovers. I don't think it'll be that easy. I think it's going to be a tough encounter, more of the lines of Portsmouth, and hopefully we can scrape a 1-0 or a 2-1 win. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm hoping we can get three or four goals, but la last time out when I thought that was going to happen against Oldham, it was scrappy and it was a 2-2 draw. So um, I'm going for a squeaky, squeaky bum 1-0 or a 2-1 victory for Rovers. Uh, so fingers crossed that happens and that will be enough to send us top and then the pressure will mount on Wigan and Shrewsbury. Let's see if they can uh, rise to the occasion. Uh, so it will be the first time, I know it's not happened yet, but it will be the first time we've topped the table. Now you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say. Let's have a listen to what Tony Mowbray had to say about the build-up to the match as well as the latest on injuries around the Rovers camp. We've heard what the gap has had to say. Let's take a look at around the grounds. What's been going on on the League One action? It was a, a half half calendar of fixtures today and we did talk about the most important one which was the Shrewsbury results they took on Rotherham and they lost 1-0 at their place other results that are going to affect us are Plymouth keep an eye on them they are red hot uh, they beat Oxford at the Kazam and also Scunthorpe United they were held to a 2-2 draw against Strugglers Northampton so you've heard what I've had to say you've heard what the gaffers had to say what's been going on on social media let's take a little look uh, in fact, I've went to the BRFCS forum uh, where a lot of Rovers fans are very vocal with their views. So let's um, take a look at some of the chip. He's training today, so I'm assuming it's all right. I'm assuming it's a bit probably bruised, or but okay, I think. He's um, took a whack in the chest as well, obviously. Um, I think he's a bit sore, but he's, he's okay. He's a big, strong boy. Yeah, I think so. I think. Um, you know, as we've talked about the last few weeks, starting to get a few players back now. Um, there's only really senior players, Peter Whittingham and Harry Chapman, really, who were um, unavailable. Um, there's a few on the way back who are still probably unavailable because of they haven't had any game time yet. But um, it's looking better on the training pitch, more numbers, and. Um, and it's, it's hopefully coming at the right time as we create competition for places. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, they have to train, I think. So they train for a week or so, and then we'll look at the games programme around the 23s and see whether it's worth giving them any game time in the 23s. Um, I think it's slightly different from Dara. Dara was out for months and months, to be honest, and he played a couple of games for the 23s. Whether we do that with Marcus, it'll depend on the, the timing of the matches. There's a lot of games coming up for the 23s. Obviously, they've got a, a youth cup, big youth cup game as well. Trying to fit in. There's a lot of fixtures to to fit in for the football club, and at this moment, there's you know not a shortage of players. But um, because of the 18s playing in the 23s, 
games etc it's very difficult to, to, to balance who's playing in which matches and so um, we might use some of the senior players coming back from injury just to fulfill some of the under 23 fixtures as well which might fit in with their program of returning towards full fitness yeah I think so um, and yet you know as I said he's, he's He's not in full-time training every day at the moment either. He's, he's doing a couple of days missing one, doing a day missing one. It's um, So once we get him back to full training and he's had a full week's training, then we can look at uh, getting him some game time, I think, for the 23s. Yeah, of course. It's, um, I don't know. We sit here, I don't know what the future holds. It's, um, I do know is that the players who have been performing for us have been helping get the job done to, us, to an extent. And Ben will have to be patient, but he is a... No, he's a different type of player from what we've got. I think he um, he's got some. You know, I've said repeatedly, you know, the lads watch him in training, and, and you know, it's fantastic some of the stuff he can do. He has to get to a stage somewhere for this club where he's doing that on the first team pitch, and all our supporters can see what he can do. And um, but he has to get fit first. And so there's no rush. It will he impact this season? I'd like to hope so for Ben, but. Um, but if not, you know, it's, it's okay. He just has to get himself fit first and foremost. Yeah, and it's been, as you said, frustrating for him. Um, I don't know the answer to it other than he, he has to get fit. He has to get picked and selected in the team. He has to, if, if he comes off the bench, he has to produce the goods. He has to show everybody what he can do, without trying to be overshowy. He's, um, he just has to work hard and, and you know, it, it, talent's there. It'll come out at the end of the day. It's, um, he just has to work hard and, and, and wait his opportunity. Again, we, we, you can't rush it. It's, that was a really bad injury, I'd have to say. And um, take our time with Harry. And when the time's right, when he's doing some training, and he's back on the training ground every day. Gets a, a 23s game either for ourselves or for Middlesbrough. Then um, we'll look at the timing of, of where we are in the season, how important the games are, and, and see whether he can impact. Yeah, I think so. I think first and foremost, to back on the training ground, get his boots on, kicking the ball around, joining in with the lads. Um, making sure that you feel as if you can do everything and then you know with the medical department with the sports science department with the player himself deciding when it's right to give him some game time um, obviously the difference between training and game time is we can't really control what's happening on a in a, in a 90 minute football match against opposition whereas in training you can control it to an extent you don't need to go crashing into tackles and things and uh, so yeah that'll be a process that will just happen by itself really will bit by bit by bit and um but hopefully he will see him back on the pitch before the season ends chat going on fgs 5635 what a cracking name that is Barry, Barry are the worst team in the division we should be winning this easily i suspect we will start with three at the back in this game raya lenehan mulgrew williams bennett dak smallwood Payne, and bell graham and Armstrong up front. Interesting formation. As for Lancaster Rover, the best attacking display I've seen was against Walsall where we played 4-2-3-1 when attacking and 4-4-1-1 uh, when we were without the ball. That worked really well as it had a fluid fluidity to be compact in defence but expansive when attacking. It could switch to 4-3-3 quite easily, getting men in the final third. Good analysis there. Dreams of 1995. I think Mowbray's going to play three at the back. If there's a game to try it, it's this. Berry have scored the fewest league goals in the league. I believe uh, he, he's gone with Raya, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Downing, Smallwood, Bennett, Payne, Dak and Bell, Graham and Armstrong. Uh, again, interesting formation. As for Jim MK2, time to stop mucking about, Tony. Forget about the opposition. Put the best attacking players on the field and let them get on with it. Nothing less than a 4-0 canter will do. Philip L. As for Philip L. On the TV, opportunity to bring fans to Ewood might even have the chance to go top. Nailed on, nil one to Berry. So that's a bit of a pessimistic uh, point of view. As for Tom Phil, he said, I can see two sides of it with Samuels being shunted about. Doesn't do him any favours. He's pretty useless on the wing and he knows he's second fiddle to Graham. So when he gets in, he'll be out again. I think Tony Mowbray does this sometimes for a couple of reasons. Trying to justify signing him and getting the player himself min minutes where possible to try and keep him interested. It's between the devil and the deep blue at the minute, but with more options now available, if he doesn't put the effort in a team where most do match in, match out, he won't do himself any favours. No excuse for being idle unless you're a Rhodes type who has that finding space finishing knack. But even then, he didn't have the physical attributes. Samuel does. He should be trying to cement himself as a target man up front 
as that's what he needs in some games. But he'll find himself further down the pecking order when everybody is fit again, or at least he should do, unless he ups his game. Lots of twists to come, so he can still end the season as a hero if he applies himself right. Some words of wisdom there for Samuel. As for J.H. Rover, I'm not too fussed about giving someone a good hiding. As soon as we'd just start, started quickly, got a couple of goals, and kept a clean sheet. A professional steady control performance where we don't shoot ourselves in the foot. Don't give any way soft goals and don't put ourselves under loads of pressure and end up hanging on for dear life or run out of time. I've missed the feeling of being 2 or 3-0 up at halftime and coasting to a routine victory. Here, here, uh, I am on the same boat. I'm very anxious and uh, as much as I love Rovers, I, I, love it with, with, I love them with my whole heart. I fear for my own health at some times because if we're hanging on for a 1-0 and, and the result uh, is so crucial just like this Monday night fixture can be. Because uh, believe it or not, I know there's a still a whole chunk of the season, but the mental mental hurdle that is for Rovers fans to get to the top spot, just to get it done, and, and you know, it's going to flip-flop. I know it, we, we might be top uh, uh, at the end of Monday night, but come next Saturday or Sunday uh, afternoon, we could be back down to third again. I don't care. I just want the feeling of getting first plot and maybe just give Shrewsbury and Wigan a bit of taste of their own medicine because those two have been coasting at periods of this season. Shrewsbury, obviously the start of the season, were rocket high and uh, had no one in anywhere, anywhere uh, very close to them whatsoever. Now Wigan over the Christmas period dominating the top spot. So if I know that, and again, they have two games in hand, but having two games in hand and being in third place is a bit of a mind bender. Uh, you know, they, they might feel, oh, yeah, 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 we've got six points in the bag. We'll be top before you know it. But at the minute, their form is all over the place. So, you know, I think it, it will be a massive mental, mental hurdle for them as well as it is a massive mental hurdle for Rovers to get to that first spot, if you know what I mean. Anyway, over the years, a number of players have played for both Berry and Blackburn Rovers. Here are a few of them. Goalkeeper extraordinaire, Alan Fettis, formerly of Berry and formerly of Rovers. I'm not sure if it, I think it was for Berry when he scored a goal uh, that kept them in the Football League. It was either for Berry or for Hull. Uh, I don't know. But he was a hero for Berry. Uh, he was a uh, part, bit part player for Rovers. As was this fella, Nathan Delfonso, bit part player for Rovers. And a bit of a, I don't know, I'm not sure how, how his time at Berry went, but. He was also in the books of Berry, as was this fella. Neil Dans was a bit part player for Rovers, but a bit of a, probably a more mainstay in the Berry lineup. Now, there are a number of other players have played for Blackburn Rovers and Berry. There is a full list on my website, uh, so feel free to check that bad boy out. Link is in the description below, so head over there and enjoy. You've heard what I've had to say about the match. You've heard what the fans have been going on about the match. You've heard what the gaffer's going on about the match. But none of that really matters whatsoever. What really matters is what Cast the Cat thinks will happen this Monday night at Ewa Park between Rovers and Berry. <laughs> today folks if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button keep you back up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers I also want to give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum if you're not checked out the forum make sure you do so there is a link in my description below it's a great opportunity for you to chat with fellow Rovers fans from around the world uh, I am also on Facebook and Twitter if you want to check me out on the go as well so just like I started the show I'm gonna end it with the same thing Win Monday night against Berry, no matter what. You can win by 100 nil, or you can win by 1 nil, and you'll be top of the league. I'm going to leave you with that. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.